Welcome back. Over the last few months, we've been spending quite a lot of time in our living rooms, back gardens and at the kitchen table, giving us a newfound appreciation for the space around us. And now, some of Ireland's top home and garden designers are coming together to share some of their tips and tricks in a free two-day virtual event. Joining me now to tell us more about it is award-winning interior designer Gwen Kenny and Ireland's favourite architect, Hugh Wallace. Good morning, Gwen and Hugh. Good Thank morning. you for joining us today. Now, this is right up my street. I think people love a good nose into other people's homes and everyone's going to have access to this event, the Inside Out Home Show. Tell us about it, Gwen. I suppose we set it up because we were going to do an actual physical event um, and then with everything that's gone on we had to change. So we've come up with the idea, Adele Roach and myself, of making this virtual online event that's accessible for everybody. So it's going to cover home, gardens, lifestyle. We have lovely interviews live on the day with Hugh. Um, we have sneak peeks around people's houses. There's lots going on. And, and, excuse me, and very importantly, you are raising money for an excellent cause, Friends of the so people on the day will be able to donate. I think you've got an auction. You can also employ the services for a certain amount of money. I think 45 euro and you have a, a consultation. And all that money is going to Friends of the Coombe, a cause close to your heart. Correct, yes. So we have um, an online art auction, which is a silent art auction. We have uh, design consultations with interior designers, architects, garden designers. And as you rightly said, then people can text four euro into the number as well if they, if they want to contribute. And what are you hoping to raise and what would the money be? used for? We're hoping to raise €50,000 and it'll be used for uh, neonatal transport incubators and monitors, two of them, which as you rightly point out is a uh, cause very close to my heart. Yeah, and you had a beautiful baby um, years ago, Rian, and you ended up in the coom. And from what I've read, you had incredible care there and very, very much kindness from the people there, as well as obviously the medical care. Yes, he was born in another hospital and unfortunately contracted um, uh, an infection. So they got transported from there to the coom, who fought to save his life and, and mine as well. Um, so he was in and out of transport incubators and incubators and then... Um, they called a helicopter to bring him from Scotland to try and save him, but he got he took a turn for the worse, so they decided to call off the helicopter. But we just didn't want other families to go through what we've been, what we were through if if equipment could help. So um, we started fundraising uh, about ten years ago in various aspects, and then three years ago we put a big team together, a team Marine, and we did the mini marathon and we delivered a neonatal incubator. So this is. Um, I said I wasn't getting involved again and then I got involved in an artificial little baby for doctors to practice on. Oh, now I only nice. raised an eyebrow or two for him, but he yeah. was amazing. So he actually teaches them how to intubate babies and everything he does, he cries, he, he's amazing. Um, and then this came along and I had this idea we were working on and whatever, so yeah, so this is the big one. You couldn't say no, <laughs> no exactly. No. I'm so sorry for your loss of baby, Rian. And, and obviously over the years, the coon must be delighted that you've kept them close to your heart too, because you will raise a huge amount of money. This Hopefully. is a, a no-brainer. It only takes every tiny little person to do one little thing of four euro and we hit the target. And then I went on and had another baby in the coom and they, they were amazing to me. They were they were just so compassionate and so kind. And that poor little lad is 10 now, but he came into the world, I think, owning two nappies and a baby grow. <laughs> and, and they were so good to me there. They really were. So, oh, yeah. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, Hugh, you are involved in this wonderful event. And I just heard before we went to air that actually you were donating your time as well and you've sold yes. out yes, but you I'm will sold out. <laughs> isn't that I'm wonderful sold, yes yes we'll <laughs> have to do a second you we'll will have second season. exactly <laughs> but you will be there in the day and as Gwen said you're going to be interviewed and um, this is a prime time in people's lives they've been looking at the same four walls for the last number mm. of months and I presume interest that was already there because hungry for programs are so hugely popular I think we're a nosy nation anyway and um, certainly now people are thinking what can I do with my own house oh, absolutely. Uh, in your experience are people trying to change part of their work home into their workspace or their home into their workspace? Well, well, they are and they aren't. Funny enough, working from home has its advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. So I think the actual working at home may well be that we're working in, in uh, sort of pods or local areas where you actually have pods but people are very sick of their four walls yeah. and we see that and we're getting an awful lot of people coming in to have consultations mm -hmm. you know and 
see what they can do with their home, how they rearrange their home, mm -hmm. how they put, not about extensions, an awful lot of people seem to think they need extensions, but they actually don't. They need space rearranged so I'm glad they're you said grabbing that. the sunlight. Yeah, because sometimes you can be kind of put off thinking, oh, I need more space, I need an extension, I don't have the money. Sure, that's a huge amount of cost Correct. involved, whereas actually repositioning things or knocking a wall Correct. sometimes Correct. creates that element of space that you yeah. have, yeah. but you're just not using it. Yeah, but also it's quite funny. A lot of people, you know, have these lovely gardens, but you can't get out to them. Mm. And, you know, it's about putting in big windows, engaging with the outside, because, like, today is an amazing day, so you can have that extra room mm -hmm. outside your house. From snooping through your eyes Indeed. in Home of the Year. Oh, my goodness. Um, I just love the eclectic taste of some homeowners and then very contemporary, modern taste. I think the Irish people, um, we're not afraid to take risks and because of the rich sort of history when you think of the arts and crafts and the sort of 1950s Absolutely. period of housing like we've quite a vast array of architecture available in the country that's already there we have a huge amount of architecture huge amount of buildings they all need down the country they need rescuing in our towns and cities they need rescuing mm -hmm. but they make the most amazing homes and and i think in ireland i think people are naturally creative I, are, I, yeah. I do, I do yeah. believe we're, we're creative, we're creative, you know, in our music, in the way we write, and I think we're also creative in our homes. And if you like there, we're willing to go out there and we're going to go and say, this is what I like, I don't care what you like. And it's also personal. That's the it beauty is. about having your it home. And um, Gwen, in your experience, are people sort of sometimes a little bit afraid um, to just go there with, say, a vibrant colour or a palette? Or do we've we had prefer loads a muted tones? No, we've had loads of conversations over the last while about that. And absolutely. But at the end of the day, it's a can of paint. You know, it's maybe 100 right. euro, a couple of days labour. That's it. Go for it. And I suppose I find the mundane, grey, greys, you know, oh. all the same. You walk into every high street and you walk into every home and they all look the same. They all have the same ornaments on the same shelves and there's no personality in them. And I think if people start putting personality back into their homes and putting up those pieces that they bought when they were on holiday, days or on honeymoon or whatever it just brings it to them it makes it more personal and I think you can see that coming back in and um, it's also important that people aren't afraid to chat to an architect or an interior designer and sometimes there's a bit of reluctance to do that and you know you can engage with a professional and you can buy time mm -hmm. like we're doing on on the on yep. the show, yeah, or, yeah. you know, yeah, it's about yes. buying consultation time so that at least you're starting off on the right track. And I was saying to you before we went live, it's 45 euros, you know, for half an hour. The feedback's been phenomenal from both the designers and architects, but also from the public. They've sent yeah. us lovely emails going, I never would have done this before. And it was scary. And for 45 euro, I would have actually given more if I'd known what I'd get for it. So but you're so really right. Good. And it does give people the confidence when you're speaking to a professional. If you engage an architect or interior designer, and oftentimes they'll work hand and hand together then you have that feeling that you've almost had a stamp of approval by the professionals so you can go forth and it ends up probably costing you less money than if you painted oh, the whole place hated it and have to absolutely. do it again and um, you have to ask you you are on a house hunt yourself that must be tricky <laughs> oh it's it's just mind-blowing we offered on a house back in february did you really and um and we, i on on friday afternoon we got told our offer had been accepted Fantastic. Yay. So yeah. you are now a homeowner. You well, no, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> oh, no. I said the <laughs> offer had been accepted. Um, so, you know, it's very exciting. Yeah. And it'll be very exciting for Martin and myself. And we're also moving right back into the city centre. And so you've got a clean sort of blank space to do up again? No, no, no. Much? It's an old house, so I have to roll up my sleeves. Martin's thoroughly excited. He's going to get on his overalls and part, part, start scraping. Like so hell. it's teamwork. The two of you will be <laughs> you doing must it. be joking. He, won't, he wouldn't know what a scraper was. Oh, I'd love to be he a fly on the wall. He's going to have painting parties for painting us. Painting parties, <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's exactly well, it. When you come over for wine and then you're asking for your advice. I think advice. I know him big time after this, so <laughs> I'll be after. Oh, well, listen, we have all the details here now and we'll let our audience know, but wishing you both the very best of luck and I'm really Thank looking you. forward to seeing it all. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thanks for coming in. Uh, just a reminder, you can access the full lineup of events at insideouthomeshow.ie or via the Inside Out pages on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thanks again, guys. Up next, we're rounding up the best of this week's TV. Don't go anywhere. See you in a few.